welcome to the webinar today. I'm Simon Cox and I'm the marketing manager here at Poppy Design Studio. We'd just like to say thank you for the opportunity of being involved with the Business Festival. And uh, in a second, I'm going to introduce you to our head designer and director, Marie Baker, who's going to be talking through some top tips for you of uh, what you can do with your website, what we should be doing with websites, etc. during this period. So it's all about a lockdown and not a shutdown. And that's what it's all about. It's been a tough time for many businesses, as we know, over the last 12 months, and many businesses have adapted and some haven't, but there still is time to adapt. Now is the time to look forward and plan and focus on your business, bouncing back stronger than ever. Now is also the time to review your online presence, boost your business profile, generate interest and leads, and show people you are still there and trading. Here you'll find out some top tips from us to give your business a boost during COVID-19. So I'd like to welcome Marie Baker. Um, Marie, what have we got for the, uh, the first tip today? So tip one, the above the fold review. People are online more than ever at the moment because of COVID and they're stuck at home. So they're searching for what they want and what they need. And you need to be the website that they wish to engage with and stay on. Stats say that when a visitor searches Google and lands on a website, they take between one and three seconds to decide if they want to stay on that website. This means if you don't make it clear what you do and what you're offering quickly, then you're going to lose their interest and they're going to leave the website. So you've just got to remember, tell the visitor what you do quickly before they even have to scroll down, because that's what above the fold is. It's any content before they have to scroll down the website and go de further, like delve deeper into the website and have your call to action buttons high on that page, your phone numbers, your email details, your contact us now button, so they can easily get in touch. So it's all about engaging with them before they even have to scroll anywhere or have to click away. So you get that initial interest and hopefully then they won't leave your website. You mentioned call to action buttons higher on a website, and that's a great way for visitors to uh, communicate with people when they first land on a website. Um, communication is so key in the current situation we find ourselves in. And your next tip is about communicating with visitors on websites and why businesses should have a COVID-19 message on the screen. It's true. I mean, have you told your customers that you're still open? Have you updated your website with a COVID-19 notice or message? People can be really quick to assume that you're not currently trading or that you've even closed during this horrible period. So by adding a quick message to your website or on your homepage, you can reassure customers that you're still there for them and you can reassure them that they can continue to use your, your services. Now with an increase in visitor experience when they first arrive on a website, uh, we're gonna be talking about website performance. What's your number three tip you got for us today? It's all about website speed. So a slow website is as bad as having no website at all. People will leave your website if it loads slowly. There can be many reasons for a slow website. Uh, some of the factors can include too many plugins, um, poor website hosting, images are too large and, and not optimized. It could be poorly coded. But if a, a site loads in over three seconds, people are going to leave you're going to lose that custom because people just want it loading quickly so they can quickly see where they want to get to. So a good tip here is there's a website called Pingdom Website Speed Test. Um, it's in the PDF that we're in the images that we're going to be showing. Um, you can go there, put your website address in, um, set the location as um, London if you're in the UK, and you can test how quickly your website's loading. Um, also, I mean, here at Poppy, we offer a free review, so we can give you all the details if your website's got any issues and it's for free. So you might as well have a look and see how your website's doing. You haven't got to buy anything. It's just literally go have your website tested and, and see if there's any issues. Yeah, you mentioned about the free review and uh, we've been doing quite a few for people during this period. What couldn't people expect in the, um, in, in the free report that we do? Well, we look at the load time, we look if it's secure, we look if the hosting, if it's if everything is loading quickly, we look at the search engine optimization, if it's got it or hasn't, we check if it's mobile responsive. But then we also look at the human touch, because I can run any software that's going to tell me those details, but we look at the human touch as well. So is it clear to a visitor that doesn't know what you're doing, what you do, easy to get in touch with you, easy to navigate? Because you need that human part. As a visitor, I need to kind of put my, play, my, 
put myself in that journey of when I go through somebody's website, is it encouraging me to do what you need to buy, sell, read, you know, that, that process. So that's what the report does really. It just brings it all together and says, these are the good bits because we want to report on the good bits as well. These are the bad bits. And here's some tips on how to fix it. Yeah, brilliant. And we all know websites aren't just seen on laptops and PCs these days. There are, you know, they're seen on a number of mobile devices such as mobile phones, iPads, tablets, etc. What would you say your top tip is for websites being visited and viewed on, you know, these these platforms, the mobile devices? So tip four is mobile responsive. So is your website easy for people to use on all devices? Does it scale down if you're on a mobile phone or just does it just load the desktop version? I mean, people would be surprised at how many websites aren't mobile responsive. For a long time now, Google has, has penalized websites that are not mobile responsive. But apart from that, it makes it harder for the visitor to navigate and click on the buttons if you're trying to click on a desktop website from your mobile phone. So it's all about remembering if your website isn't mobile responsive, you will be losing visitors and you will be losing rankings in Google. And you might want to consider a website update or upgrade so it is mobile friendly. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for that. It's such a key thing in you know the current world, isn't it? Hundred percent. Grabs their mobile phone and you know has a look on uh, on 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 their phones to get a quick access to a site, and it's so critical, as you say, to to be mobile responsive. So I think that's a great tip that one. And over the years, we've become a nation of bloggers. Uh, what would you say your top tip is when it comes to blogging on websites? Blog, blog, and blog a bit more. So it's no secret that Google rewards websites and their rankings if it's updated regularly and it offers unique content. So blogging is a great way to please Google, but then again, it shows visitors that you're active and you're updating the website and you're still in business. So maybe your business has adapted, maybe you offer delivery now and you didn't previously. Maybe you've donated food to the NHS workers or have a story about how you supported your local community blog about it people want to see this news it makes them feel good shows them that you're you know you're still there um and it's all about getting your message out there for them to see that you're active so it will all come together and it, it will just it will help your rankings and it will help you as a business be out there more yeah brilliant i mean uh, i think it is key these day and age as well to show your your position in the industry you're in as well by blogging as well. I think it's a great way to be able to uh, to position yourself, I think. Definitely. Brilliant. And what would you say your final tip is for uh, business owners during this period? So tip six is adapt. So we've seen a lot of customers recently, they've had to adapt. Um, maybe you own a restaurant and you cannot open and you've decided to offer home delivery. The customer will probably search um, two places to quickly find you. They'll, they'll look on something like Just Eat or they'll look for your website, see if they can order from you. And not everyone can pass the criteria for online um, ordering systems like Just Eat. And they rely you know, solely on their website or social media to promote themselves. So why don't you consider adding an online booking system to your website? You could add a menu, a booking system to make it easier for people to order. If you can't afford a booking system to your website, why not push your special offers on social media and in your blog? You might want to do a Mother's Day afternoon tea. Or if you're a beauty salon currently closed, it's really hard for those type of industries. But maybe you could sell oh, your, your beauty products on Facebook or even sell them on your website. So you've had to close, but you're kind of adapting. And that's what it's all about. It's about keeping your name out there at the moment and surviving. And when you can adapt, that will really help people and help your business. So I think that's really important. So in summary, there's just a few tips for you and hopefully you found those beneficial to uh, to help you and your business survive through this uh, pandemic and during COVID-19. That's it. I mean, a lot of these are just tips and a lot of them are obvious. Um, but you, sometimes you need the obvious pointing out to you so you can then look at it deeper and say, do you know what, that's actually a good idea. It's all about talking to people at the moment. I mean, we know, Simon, don't we, the, the involvement we have in the local business community, um, we hear many different stories of people, how they're adapting, how they're struggling, 
um, the different challenges of looking after their kids, homeschooling, trying to run a business. I know being self-employed and trying to do teams with a child, trying to connect to that, and I'm in a meeting, it's tough. And we've all just got to look at these little things and use the time that we've got to kind of review these things. And an online presence is big at the minute. <laughs> Um, we're very lucky we're very busy because it, it's that online world and that's where you've got to tap into if you haven't already because that's where you're going to get a lot more customers because everyone's there that the the rate of people using mobile phones used to be a lot more than desktops for viewing websites but now it's it's nearly even again because everybody's sitting on their laptops or computers browsing as well as on their mobiles Mm. so you mentioned, you mentioned about getting found online and the one thing in the tips we didn't really cover was uh, seo and search engine optimization yeah. um are there any sort of tips around that you could give there are i mean again having a free report to identify if your site's been optimized or not is is the first step if it hasn't been optimized it depends on your really your technical knowledge um because when you seo a site um, you've got to look at the image sizes, you've got to look at your header ones, your twos. We could get really technical here and a lot of it will go over people, definitely your it's head. Over my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, but those sort of things will help in your organic rankings and that takes time, whereas people want instant results at the minute. So um, a lot of experts are saying turn to AdWords at the moment because again, it's instant results. The cost of uh, per click is actually really low at the minute because a lot of people stopped using AdWords because of their budget. So they were panicking about cash flow. So actually getting ads out there at the minute is probably a good idea if you've got that budget to invest in it. Um, so it's about, with SEO, it's kind of, you need an expert to guide you really. But there is, for WordPress, if anybody's got a WordPress website, there is a great plugin called Yoast. Most designers will install it for you if they've built the website. And you can learn how to SEO and you can learn the basics. Definitely learn to SEO your own blog posts. Mm. So. And what would you say about um, you know, people out there that are looking to take maybe their first steps onto the internet with uh, you know a new brand and a website during this period as well? Because it's going to be people starting out on a business journey as well as those that are looking to obviously you know keep their brand visible. Actually, the amount of people searching and starting up a business right now is starting to rocket because a lot of people are starting these new businesses. Um, it all depends on budget. You could start off with a Wix website or even a WordPress website um, and build it yourself if you haven't got the funds at the moment. There are grants out there to help you afford a new website. There are companies, obviously I know myself, but there are lots of companies like us that offer payment plans for startups to be able to spread the cost to get the website there. So it's really important you get your logo and branding and your business name sorted out, and then you get a website. You don't need it all singing and dancing right at the start. It's all about just having an online presence. You could start with a one-page website um, and then build it up as you go. Um, so it's, yes, yeah, just having something there. So you do look professional. And then if you are a startup, make sure all your social media, um, usernames are available in your business name. Cause it's such a pain when your business name is gone. <laughs> it really is. So it's all about that really. Yeah. You, you just touched on something really key there as well. Cause, um, you know, branding is not only the visual thing that you see, it's also about the, yeah, the social media accounts, as you just said there, about the the name. So you know, ABC Plumbing may be available on you know ABC Plumbing dot co dot uk may be may be available, but ABC Plumbing One might be your Twitter handle because ABC Plumbing has been taken by that's it. Somebody it's else, that little so. bit of research when you're starting up, definitely. And even if you get your domain name and save it and just put holding page there with your contact details. Marie, let me ask you, what's um, what's your view on email addresses on websites? Well, that's another thing that can let websites down. So if you've got a really professional website like poppydesignstudio.com and then you have an email address of marie at gmail.com, it just makes you look really unprofessional. You, you need to get an email address like marie at poppydesignstudio.com because it just adds that finishing touch and it's all about these little things that people kind of 
forget sometimes but can make that difference between somebody choosing you rather than your competitor so if you've got your domain name you can um, get your email address either from your hosting or we advise people to get a Microsoft 365 email account because then it's separate to your, your actual website hosting. You've got the redundancy then if one went down, which nothing's 100%, then you've always got your email backed up on a, on a different server. So it's, it's dirt cheap. It's really, it's, it's the right way to go to look professional. Mm. Would you say um, would you say it adds confidence to people visiting the site when they see an email address which runs in line with the domain name? Hundred percent. I mean, if you see a van out there, a builder's van, and it's got Tim at Hotmail dot com, you know, as the email address, it's not gonna it's not gonna evoke confidence in somebody. But if you see Tim at this is my builders dot com, for example, it it does show that they're at that next level. So even if you're even selling on just Facebook, again, have your domain name there, even if it's just sitting there with a coming soon, but then have the professional email for people to email you. It looks better when you're replying to things as well. Mm. And um, although we haven't focused too much on social media here at Popper Design Studio, what would you say about uh, you know social media's uh, accounts linking through to websites? Do you think it's important these days? 100%. So it's really important that you have links from your social media on your website and also in the back end the technical side if you tell your your pet website pages what social media accounts you've got linked up like with wordpress you do it for through the plugin called yoast then google reads that and then it can see how active you are on social media and again it helps your rankings and it ties your business up with your website and then on Google Business Listing, which is another really important thing on Google Maps, um, to have that list in there, it then will find your social media accounts and start showing how active you are on social media. So again, it's all about confidence and um, instilling that into your customers. So. Yeah, you mentioned Google My Business. Um, how important would you say that is for, for businesses to claim those listings and where would they be able to find that information? really really important and you can just google google my business and you can set up an account um and then you can verify that you're at the address that you say you are and then you'll start coming up in google maps and when when people are searching for local businesses you want to be coming up in the local map map listings mm. so again you can add your website um it'll pick up the social media links automatically but even now, when you're scheduling your social media posts, for example, you can even post to your Google business listing so it, you can keep your news out there. So when somebody searches for you, they can see your latest posts on there as well. So they'll see that you're active and you're still alive, basically. Yeah. And for somebody who doesn't really understand uh, website uh, domain names and things like that, you see HTTPS and http and you see all that you know that those those characters in the address um bar do you just want to explain a little bit more about what what all that means it's all about if your website's secure and if it's got a ssl certificate installed so when a user goes to your your website if they see a little padlock and it says it's not secure and the padlock's open it's basically going to give the user a warning to say this isn't secure because you've not got that certificate installed and you have that done through your website hosting. Um, some hosts charge for it. Some people will offer it for free. It's really important that your site's built on HTTPS now rather than HTTP. Because again, Google can downgrade your rankings if it's not secure. On different browsers, it can pop up a message. Or you, even your, like your Bitdefender, your security can pop up saying, this website's not secure, take me back to safety. And you're losing visitors then just for the sake of having a site built securely. Mm. Um, and again, it's not just about losing visitors. If you log in anywhere or you've got a shop or anything like that, you need your site to be secure and have that extra level of security. You don't want to lose visitors. Marie, the other thing I was going to ask you as well, which I think would be really beneficial to uh, people watching this webinar, would be about uh, maintenance of websites. Do you want to touch on a little bit about uh, maintenance of websites? Well, I specialize in WordPress. That's where my experience is. I've been working with it for 17 years. And the thing, so I'll advise on that because that's my speciality. But with WordPress websites, they have to be kept up to date to stay secure. 
Um, WordPress brings out lots of updates, core updates, theme updates, plugin updates. And when they're not updated, if you're not doing the maintenance on your website yourself or your designer isn't doing it for you, it can leave a vulnerability. So it means the hackers can get in. Now, a lot of small businesses think, oh, it won't happen to me. We had a client in Odeby. Um, she got hacked um, and they made a right mess and put malware all over her business pages. Um, and it really, it really was detrimental to her business and her listings. Uh, she got um, blacklisted on Google because she'd been hacked. We had another client recently that had one of our free reports. He didn't even realize he'd been hacked, but loads of his pages were leading to Viagra pages. And he didn't know because they were hidden it, right in deep in his pages. And we only saw it because we crawled every single URL that was coming off his website. Um, so that's the importance of staying up to date because even he admitted that it wasn't up to date. It wasn't, it wasn't being updated. Mm. So don't, you don't just have a website designed and then leave the security. You've got to keep, keep it up to date um, just for that benefit because anyone can be hacked. Even if you're updating, you can be hacked. But if you're at least backing up, you're reducing the risk as long, you know, as long as you are keeping up to date. It's about reducing that risk. Yeah, and you mentioned about that website that was sort of compromised and had all those hidden links. I suppose for any business owner that's a small business that, you know, they're not necessarily thinking of their website every single second of the day like, you know, we are here at Poppy. It's more um, they're busy running their businesses. So I suppose that report is, is quite critical for uh, finding a lot, of, a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the things that go on inside websites. 100%. I mean, it's not people's job that aren't web designers to know to look for these things or even know that it could be going on and unless you're keeping an eye on it and checking these things you know you're just going to get on with running your own business aren't you so it's important to even if you think your website is doing amazing just have that health check or just check up on it once a year even just to make sure there's nothing going on it's just better to check yeah, that's no, absolutely. And and talking of that sort of thing, I mean, how easy um, is it to hack into a website? I mean, obviously we've seen quite a bit going going on during this uh, during this period uh, where people haven't necessarily had a secure internet at home, and you know hackers have got through. How straightforward is it to be able to hack into a website? In all honesty, anywhere can be hacked. It really can, and that I'm not saying that to scare people. It, it's true. All you've got. The thing that you've got to do and where you buy your hosting from and who you have it designed with, you've just got to do as much as possible to reduce the chances of you being hacked. Um, extra security on your server. We use Immunify on the actual server side. Then we have plugins actually in the WordPress installation. We keep everything up to date. But even doing everything like that and firewalls and everything else, you can never say you're never going to be. So that's the important thing. Maintenance isn't just about updating everything. It's about taking a regular backup. Because if anything does happen, you can restore it quickly and fix it um, and get it back to how it was. So, yeah, without scaring people, anything can happen like that. But you've just got to try and do your best to look after the, after the site. Mm. Do you think many people see their websites as an asset to their business or they just see it as an opportunity to, to get seen online? I think I think it's a mixture. I think a lot of people do really realize how valuable their sites are. I think there's still a lot of people that think, oh, why do I need a website? Um, I'm doing all right without one. And there are some businesses that do fine without a website. But the general consensus is you need one just to show that level of professionalism if you're doing work for somebody, they're going to look online for you. If they can only find a Facebook page, they won't be as impressed as if they go then go and Google you and find somebody that else is there that's got a website. But also with a website can then come your reviews, your Google reviews, you can you show your Facebook reviews, your trust pilots, because it's all about trust in today's day and age. Um, especially if you're in a, a business that relies on, on that feedback from consumers, you need to be able to show off those reviews and show that you're the person that they should choose to buy from. So how important do you think it is for websites to carry reviews in this day and age? 
It is really important. Um, people go off word of mouth. It's the strongest form of advertising. I still stand by that. Um, but anybody can just stick reviews into a website. I can put any in there, but they're not, you know, nobody would know if they're true or not. So what I think is really important, yes, we publish our reviews that people have left for us, but also linking through to your Google reviews and also linking through to your Facebook reviews because people can see they're from real people. And it's that that's the important thing because any designer can put anything in there and it could be completely falsified. Whereas if they can see real people are behind with real businesses behind your reviews, then it, it's got that weight behind it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great thing, a great tip that as well, uh, to be able to, um, you know, it's outside what we were talking about earlier, but uh, it's, still a, it's still a key tip for people there to, to have a look 100%. at uh, linking your testimonials back to the source, basically, isn't it? Back to the Facebook or maybe the Google. That's page. it. People know it's that it's real then. That's that's what's important. Marie, what would you say to anybody that's uh, maybe got some knowledge within their business that they could share on their website? Would you say that's something that they should be looking to add to their site? Adding downloadable resources and, and freebies and basically helping people and advising them is the best thing you can do, especially during COVID times. People will remember you if you're offering free support. They will remember you if you want to go that extra mile for them. Um, having downloadable resources on your website is always good for Google anyway. Upload a PDF, it helps your rankings. But just by giving something back to people without asking for a sale, that sticks in people's memories. Um, and it shows that you're not just out there for the latest sale or the um, just to line your pockets. You're actually there because you care and want to help them. Um, and, and that's the way we do it, is how we market without actually marketing or selling. We, we just want to help people. Um, and, and that's really important to any business owner. You can sell without even trying to sell because as long as you come across as true to you and, and that's not the reason you're helping people, um, people believe in you and, and, and they just appreciate the help. And that's what it's about now, surely. These are tough times on so many people. If I can spend half an hour out my day, yes, we're busy, but if I can spend that time just helping someone and giving them advice, even if they're not going to become my customer, I feel better. As a business owner, isn't that what everyone wants? Yeah, and everyone loves a freebie as well. So um, it's, it's always good. To, it's always good to ask a question, isn't it, and, and find out what we can find out for for free. But uh, but no, I think you're right. I think it's good to be able to you know share your knowledge, share what you know. Um, you know, on a website with some resources and, uh, you know, if there's any businesses out there that have got resources that they think they should add to their site, you know, maybe that's something they should look at. So yeah, definitely. I think it's a good thing to look at as well. So that brings us towards the end of today's webinar. And, um, yeah, it's been great to, to be here once again. I just want to say thank you to Recovery for Enterprise and the team. That, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. It's been really yeah. good to do this. Hopefully it helps some people. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, we're, we're the kind of people that, you know, if people want help, just want to reach out and, and just run something through us, then uh, you have mentioned earlier about being able to give people some time. Um, Always. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to pick up the phone, get in contact with us. The details are on the screen. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from you soon and we can see what we can do to spend some time with you and hopefully, uh, you know, give you some inspiration and ideas behind what else you could do. So just to summarise, here's our top tips from Poppy Design Studio for the Business Festival here. So tip number one was uh, the above the fold review. You know, have a look at your contact details and how visible they are. Uh, tip number two, have you told your customers you're still open by having a COVID-19 statement clearly visible on your site to show that you are still trading, but also that uh, to give them confidence that you're still around. Uh, tip number three, have a look at your website speed and the performance of your site. Tip number four, is your website mobile responsive and does it uh, reduce in size when uh, when you look at it on a mobile device? Tip number five, blog, blog and blog a bit more. So keep the blogging going on out there and uh, sharing your knowledge and expertise. And tip number six, see how you can adapt your business to change in a different different world out there and uh, obviously get that seen on your website and uh, your online presence so hopefully that's been a benefit to you thank you for joining us here on the webinar and uh, keep safe keep smiling and hopefully we'll see you all soon